Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. Welcome back to the show. If you're looking for a really simple way to help out the David Pakman Show, go to donateyouraccount.com slash David Pakman Show. Put in your Twitter account information and donate a tweet to us. We'll use it to promote the show. There will be no tweets about uh, any of Lewis's metal band hijinks. I can guarantee you that. The AT&T T-Mobile merger. This was kind of a big topic. I was at that national conference for media reform over the weekend and a lot of discussion about wireless and the AT&T T-Mobile merger. There is so much wrong with this merger and it is really not being discussed almost at all that I don't even know where to begin, Lewis. I really don't. And we're at the point now where, again, like with Comcast NBC, it's now left to federal regulators at the Department of Justice and the FCC to decide what is really best for Americans when it comes to this merger. And you know what? Regardless of antitrust, regardless of the legal side, I want to focus on what is best for Americans. And I will tell you right now, it is not for this merger to go through. Wasn't T-Mobile doing poorly? I don't know if they were doing poorly or not. I mean, I know that they, 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 a lot of people have moved away from T-Mobile and opted for the big two, which I mm -hmm. believe are AT&T and Verizon. Right. And I'll just go through this list. I mean, number one, if you believe there should be competition in the wireless market, which is a market that is increasingly important given the preponderance of, of wireless devices, additional ways to access the internet wirelessly, that is an area where we need competition unless you're happy with what's going on with cable TV. If that suits you, then by all means, Lewis, you should be in favor of this merger. If you like the way that we shop for cable television. Now, I don't know about you, Lewis, but to me, I, I, it doesn't work for me. Cable TV, no, which I don't have. But right. No. Well, that's, that's, we're opening up a can of worms there to talk about Lewis's buying habits. This merger would erode competition, which, by the way, barely exists in the wireless market even more. It would make it so that AT&T and Verizon, two companies, would control almost 80% of the entire American wireless market. And for those who say, well, just because a company could abuse power with that much market share, two companies could, that doesn't mean they would. Actually, AT&T is already known for doing that. And this is unthinkable in so many industries. 80% two companies controlling 80% of the market? And that's in the interest of the American people? Imagine if ExxonMobil, imagine if ExxonMobil were to merge with BP, Shell, Chevron Texaco, and Citgo. That would make ExxonMobil about the same size as AT&T would be in terms of market share with this deal. Who in their right mind, even given the subsidies and sweetheart deals that oil companies get, would be okay with ExxonMobil merging with BP, Shell, Chevron, Texaco, and Citgo? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. This is not in your interest. Who would allow, in the oil industry, one of the most corrupt industries, people still wouldn't allow it, would they? Who? Who wouldn't allow it? In other words, the regulators and, and those making the decision about being in the interest of the public or not, they would know for sure it's not in the interest of the public to have a merger of that scale. Doesn't mean they wouldn't allow it. Well, no, I be actually believe that they wouldn't. As corrupt as things are, I actually believe that would not happen. It would just, it, it would not happen. The merger will result in higher prices and less choices. AT&T and Verizon currently control about two thirds of the market. They have a long history of raising, raising prices together in concert, as they did last year by requiring all customers on feature phones to add data plans. I thought jobs were a concern. This will not create a single job, Lewis. This merger will kill tens of thousands of U.S. jobs. And we're wondering, is it in the interests of the American people? When was the last time a merger actually created jobs for Americans, by the way, period? That's question number one. And then we have to say, well, what about this specific merger? Executives are going to say, they're, they're saying they're going to save 40 billion. They're what they're calling merger synergies. What does that mean, Lewis? Synergies? Well, it means many of the T-Mobile jobs at retail stores, those will be gone. T-Mobile jobs at call centers, those will be gone. For everybody who called the Obama health care bill a job killer, I'm hearing crickets on this one. I'm hearing nothing. 
And also, I know it's probably not as big of a deal, but this is also not going to help innovation. AT&T has a history of making handset manufacturers cripple features like Wi-Fi so that people can't use, for example, Google Voice. Instead, they have to use minutes. For a while, it was, the iPhone was doing it with Skype. We know that that's going to continue the more the more market share they have. And it is a merger to th uh, uh, the merger is a threat to free speech and to openness on the wireless web, something which we know, Lewis, these companies and their lobbyists have a huge influence on. All right. Now, if T-Mobile is doing as poorly as I thought they were, I don't know for sure how they're doing. So I, I don't know that we want to premise any any discussion on that. But please I, I, go ahead. I mean, if the company's going to fail, yeah. let's just say that's that's the outlook. I don't think it was. It, it is going to fail. What difference would it make if they if they were? I mean, if this is to if that were the case, this would be saving jobs. Uh, no. Uh, well, it, you're saying if the company were if, if we knew for sure the company was destined to fail altogether and all of the jobs were going to be lost, then wouldn't this be a positive thing? Right. Why on earth would AT&T be buying a company that was destined to fail completely and go completely out of business? Why wouldn't they? They'd be expanding the horizons. Suddenly, every T-Mobile user is an AT&T user. If the, if the business model were completely unviable, we would not be having this discussion. I'm sure of it, Lewis. AT&T is not going to make deals to save companies out of the goodness of their heart. No, it's an expansion. It's an expansion of AT&T. They need, it, it's more complicated than that. They need the capacity. They need to, there's a lot of expenses still that would need to be, if, if this was not really what I am describing here, I think that we would be seeing it handled in a much different way. We wouldn't be seeing this handled in the, well, is it okay for these companies to take so much market share by merging? It would be a different discussion. Believe me, if the if this was to save the jobs of T-Mobile, the the conversation would be completely different. The store, the media story would be different. Hey, there might even be a media story. Go figure. Well, true. It's not like T-Mobile uh, has filed for bankruptcy, but we don't know what their what their outlook was. No, we don't know. But, but they were a viable business. They th there's no indication that we need to be going under the assumption that that AT&T is doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. There's no. just, it's like saying, well, uh, I don't know for sure. Either way, it's in their best interest. In AT&T's. Right. They're either taking out a competitor. Oh, okay, but Lewis, this is, we're getting into the weeds here. We're getting into hypotheticals that have no bearing on reality. No bearing on reality. That we know of. In other words, there's no reason to think that that, that was going to be the case. My five points stand true. That's where I'll leave it. And that everybody it, should that be it, that concerned. That it's unhealthy.